your fresh TV sport V10 here. And today we got a very, very, very special guest. It's the bags man, the marks man, the goal machine, the face of grassroots football right now, Mr. Zach Anson. <laughs> Um, well, thanks for taking time out of your day to have an interview with us. Obviously, this is an interview we've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, let me just start. How, how's, how's the pandemic treating you? What you've been doing in this lockdown? You've been obviously I see you on Instagram, keeping fit, doing your prehab, as you say. So, what what you've been doing? Just prehab or business? What's it been? Um, I've been trying to train myself really, like just not overload it. I took like two weeks off. I didn't train at all. I just done prehab work, just working on my knee and stuff. Um, but the last two weeks I've been training at least three times a week, and I train with a couple of training partners. And also the last week I've been training, doing my one-to-one -one sessions with um, clients that I usually work with before this pandemic started. Okay, that's big. Um, well, I just want to have a, like a general discussion with you, basically. Um, I watched a couple of your interviews, and um, I know that obviously you've played at basically every level now. You've, you've represented your country at a under, was it 16s? Yeah. You played at Arsenal, you've done it at a non league level, and obviously you're doing it at a Sunday league level. Um, I just wanted to ask I know you said football is your first love. Um, so, my first question is like, wh what made you fall in love with football in the first place? I don't remember any particular thing that made me fall in love with football. I just, since I can remember, I've always like had a ball on my feet. When I was young, I always used to wear different football kits. I used to support Man United, but I used to have like West Ham kit, Leeds United kit, Derby kit, South Think, like it was mad. So it's just like instantly that was my go to without even knowing. Yeah. Okay, and um, obviously, I know that your dad was a professional. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, what type of influence did he have and support did he give for you growing up on you obviously loving football and pursuing that as a career? Um, I would say he would just give me advice, even from, from a young age, it wasn't really, it wasn't like a pushy parent, it was just advice, or always asked me, am I enjoying it? That's the first thing he would just say, if you're not enjoying it, son, tell me, like, we can, we can move team, like, literally. So he always asked me if I'm enjoying it, and then as I got older, he'd give me advice on my performances, how to be off the pitch and stuff like that. And um, I know that you've obviously trained in a professional environment with Arsenal and I see a picture with you in training with players like Fabregas. Um, just on a personal level, uh, who's like the best player that you've seen in training and you just thought, wow, this guy's unreal kind of thing? Um, the best player I would probably be, I'd say, like that the world will know would be Fabregas. Like as he's probably the biggest star, but in training, the best player I've seen was Arshavin in training, he was ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, I remember when he first came to Arsenal, he had a fire, was it a Euros or World Cup, and then he came and he was just banging bare goes, yeah, yeah, against Liverpool, yeah, yeah, big. Um, okay, and obviously you, you made the transition from, um, transition rather from the pro game to non-league, um, obviously there's a bit in between, but you've got to the non-league, and um, I was looking at some of your stats, and I know you've, Overall, non-league, according to Google, this is you've played 69 games and scored like roughly around 54, 55 goals. Um, what would you say the the biggest difference is in a professional environment to like the non-league? Um, I would say small margins, really. Like ability-wise, it's not too much of a drastic difference. It's just the small margins, like the fitness, more organised, like players in. The professional game that I've played against, so can, can play the percentage, percentage football better than in non-league. You get what I mean? It's just it's just a bit more organised, a bit more structured. Um, and obviously, you signed for SC Dons. That's what you're well known for. But I know you 
played Sunday League before you went to SC Dunn. So um, what attracted you to Sunday League football if you've played at all these different levels, obviously your household name? Um, what made you gravi gravitate to like grassroots Sunday football? Literally, there was a period when I stopped playing football for like six months because of injuries and stuff. I'm, mentally, I was going through a lot. Like it was, it was telling on me. So I said, no, let me take a break of football, get my body right. And then my mates, they played for a Sunday team called Balgowan. They were in the same, they were in the Met League. And Don Dons were in the Met League. So I joined them, played for like four months, we done all right. And then ended up signing for the Don, they were in the same league. So yeah, I started at Balgowan, went to the rivals in it. <laughs> well, did you play against Dons when you was? No, I didn't play, I didn't play. I didn't play against Dons. That's mad, because at the time I was thinking I had plans to go back into the pro game. So I was like, let me not, obviously I knew Dons was on YouTube, let me not be on YouTube playing Sunday League because I was, I was thinking, no, I don't want to do that. But now looking back on it, I should have just done it because look where we are today. Okay, and um, obviously SC Dons are pretty much the face of Sunday League football, YouTube football. Um, what would you say, what, what do you think, what, why do you think SC Dons are where they are today? Why, why, are they, why do people gravitate to them so much? Why have they got such a following? Um, it's almost like a cult following with their f with their fans, their proper like fans, f they're almost family. Like you always say, what what creates that atmosphere to make people gravitate and and love the Don so much? I just feel like it's a, it's an organic movement. Like everyone in the movement is natural. No one's like acting for the cameras, and there's so many different characters on screen that people can relate to. Like some people's favourite character might be Big G, some people's favourite character might be Tavis for example. Like he's on the side, he don't play, but he's a big part of the episode, do you get what I mean? There's so many different elements to the brand that all different people can relate to from all different kind of ages. You get what I mean? Um and obviously you have a massive reputation um in the Sunday League. Um does does that pressure weigh you at all or is it just literally all fun for you, you take it in your stride and it's just another game. No, I don't really feel the pressure like like that. I don't feel like there's a weight on, on my shoulders. Obviously, there is because I'm the number nine for our team. But that comes with being a striker. You get what I mean? You just have to own it. If you, if you believe you should be the number nine for the team, you should believe that the pressure is on you. But you, you're not meant to feel it. For me, anyway, as a striker, you shouldn't feel it. You just own it and take and run with it, literally. Okay, and obviously, um, this season got um postponed because of the pandemic, um. But the season coming up, I'm seeing a lot of Sunday teams making some big signings um, and it looks like it's going to be maybe the most competitive league that we, we've ever seen in Sunday League football. Who would you say your main competition is if, if, if everything runs smoothly and the season starts again in September, August, whenever it is? Who do you see as your main competition? It's a trick one. Hopefully, I want Lambeth to come into our league, obviously, for obvious reason. I think they're one of the top teams in London. If not the country, country they showed that this season. So I'd say they would definitely be one of our biggest opposition, our biggest competitors. Um, Portland, you can't overlook Portland. They've done well in the nationals. That's not easy to do. So they've got to be in there. And there's obviously Kenny Mo, they're, they're always good. There's loads of, there's a lot of blend, Blendon, they're a good team. We played them this season. Hopefully they can come into our league. I'm not too sure what's happening with them. So, But I think there's so there's so much. Rocker seniors, they've signed a couple of good players that I know. So... It's going to be interesting still. Okay, and I'm um, just to uh, go, go away from Sunday League now. Um, I want to talk about the non-league scene. And obviously a lot of players are dropping out of the non-league scene and coming into Sunday football. Um, why, do you, why do you think people are gravitating more to the Sunday League than Saturdays? And um, would you say a Sunday League is a better ground to progress as a player, potentially now or in the future? Um, I think players are gravitating towards Sunday League because literally it's more organic. There's not as much politics going on in and behind the scenes. Like people are playing because they want a certain amount of money or the chairman wants, wants him to play or whatever. It's more you link up with your friends on a Sunday and you go to war. And it's almost, and it's almost it, it, it means more when you're with your friends. For me anyway, I feel like it means more. I'm not, I'm not getting paid or anything, but it means more. It's bragging rights. And it's, especially if you know someone on another team or whatever, whatever. You get what I mean? It's bragging rights in almost the area. Yeah, I think, I'd say Saturday is still the place, I think, to progress and kick on and go into the programme. But it's definitely going to be a change, I feel like. Like, Sunday League's getting bigger and bigger. I feel definitely feel like within the next five years, you're going to see multiple different Sunday League players go into the programme, just like Rising Bulls have been doing. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, I want to go into your reputation, and obviously, you're 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 known as the bags man, goals galore. Your stats speak for themselves. Um, but I've watched you three times live this season, and obviously, you scored in two of them, and the one you didn't score in, you was dominant, like you was dangerous throughout. But what stuck out, stuck out for me most was your your intelligence as a player. And, and the responsibility you took if you weren't getting the ball to drop deep. And I know as a striker who's willing to drop deep and create from, it, it makes the centre backs uh, job so much harder because they don't know whether to come with you or whatever. Would you say that's a part of your game that gets overlooked? I feel like, yeah, I think, or in that social media and stuff, I feel like, yeah, it does get overlooked because that's people don't really want to see that. They just want to see the goals, stats, or whatever. But for me, that's a part of my game I've always took pride in more, even even almost more so than goals. Like I've always worked on a link-up play, how can I involve others, how can my runs make space for the centre midfielders, attacking midfielders on the wingers. I've always, always prided myself on that. And even from a young age, I used to play number eight or number ten rather than number nine. So that's probably that's that side coming out with me in my game, you get what I mean? And, um, and as far as um, playing, who would you say the hardest defender you've had to come up against in the Sunday League specifically? Was there like a, a player that you thought, like this guy is hard to play against? He, this, this is this is a tough challenge. I would say uh, this season, Lambeth defenders, who was it? The Nosworthy was started off the game and Albi, they were good defenders, they were good. Um, but I'd say last season, I, was, I thought, maybe I didn't expect it, there was, um, what's his, his name's Guy, Guy from Kenilmill. I didn't expect him to be as good as he was. Do you get what I mean? He was clever and he was he was young, so I was thinking, oh, this young boy, he's not really gonna be. But he was on it. He was good. He was. He, was, he wasn't one of them. I couldn't. He didn't let me feel him. Yeah, Never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was always there. Okay, okay. So I respected him. He was a good, he's an intelligent defender. Okay. And um, away from football, um, what what other ho hobbies do you have interests outside of football? How do you spend your spare time, or what other interests do you have? Football, I can't lie, but um, <laughs> but I'd say like, another sport that I don't do, but I watch all the time, like is boxing. Okay. Literally, I watch boxing all all day. Like when I'm not playing football, I watch boxing or watch boxing interviews. Like I watch all them Eddie Hearn interviews. Literally, I'll sit there watch our interviews of boxing. Them talk about boxing, talk about ins and outs, how they make the fights and stuff. Like I don't know, it just that it just intrigues me to see, and I, I like the work rate the boxers put in. You get what I mean? Before it comes to the fight, and I respect it. So I'd say boxing, and also, and also music-wise, like I'm a big house music fan. Okay. Yeah, people, some people will know it, some people won't know it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just to touch on the boxing, Tyson Fury or AJ? Tyson Fury, I can't lie to you. I think Tyson Fury knocks him out, probably. Okay, and um, if you had to give advice to any young aspiring footballers out there, because obviously you've been there, you've done it, you've been through it, you've had the injuries, you've come back, um, you've played at the highest level, and what advice would you give them? I'd say enjoy it first thing, enjoy it, listen to your coaches and don't take it for granted, then at whatever level you're playing that, you never know, like, the career's short, you get what I mean? And you know when you hear them coaches say, pull it in, because in 10 years down the line you don't have no regrets. Even me, I feel like five years ago, if I worked a little bit harder, some things might some things might have been a little bit different, you get what I mean? So I'd say put in, put in put in the work and see where it takes you. You can never fail really and truly if you try your hardest, you get what I mean? You can be proud of that. And um obviously again I was watching a, a lot of your interviews and I what what came across to me is your passion to help the next generation and the youth and the community. Where does that where does that stem from? Like why are you so passionate about it? I don't know, I just feel like we have a responsibility, especially now we've got a platform, we've got a responsibility to show the youth that, okay, if you don't make it in the pro game, there's other avenues you can get into. You guys, for example, with your fresh, you're, you're providing coverage for Sunday League football. That can be, someone in the schools and local can aspire to be like you. Literally, you get what I'm saying? You don't have to go to the roads and do all this madness, do all this badness for the quick change, you get what I'm saying? So, I think, it's something we've all got to take responsibility for and bleed the youth, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, 100% agree with you, that's big. And um, that's pretty much the, the interview wrapped up, but uh, there's one question I want to ask, and probably what I'm going to ask with all my interviews. Um, again, it is football related. Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi? 
This is my that question. I think I'll be honest. I'm a Ronaldo fan. Sport Man United. I'm a Nike man. I don't like Adidas like that. <laughs> I prefer Ronaldo, but Messi is a better football player. You get what I mean? But Ronaldo, for what he what he's done and the work he's put in and what he represents, I prefer Ronaldo. But Messi, when it comes to football, he's better. <laughs> thank you. Um that, thank you so much, obviously taking time out um, to give us an interview. Obviously it's very insightful. Um, this will be on our YouTube channel, um, Your Fresh TV Sport, SC Dons, Zach Ansar. It's been a pleasure, my brother. Peace.